Good day, fellow investors. I firmly believe that investing is, of course, first about research, knowing all the accounting, all that's going on, following and everything. But everybody can get to that. You have data, you have everything. Everything is public today on the internet. The key then comes to the mindset. And Benjamin Graham said that the biggest enemy of each investor is himself. So it's crucial to develop a correct investing mindset so that you can take advantage of what's going on, increase your long-term returns. And today I will share with you 10 mindset tools that you can use that give you an advantage over Wall Street. Wall Street is, like the majority of people, very short-term oriented. And therefore, if you have a long-term orientation, a business orientation, if you're calm, if you're ready to buy into panic and sell into exuberance, you might do very, very well for you and eliminate all the fuss, all the hysteria, all the irrationality that Wall Street is always offering. You just need to turn on the news and it will be always short term panic and always about something new. We are, have the trade wars now. We had the Fed interest rates a year ago. Always something. Who talks about North Korea anymore? But two years ago, it shaked the markets. So just follow these 10 principles and of course the channel if you like them. So please subscribe if you like this mindset style investing and then you will do well over time. Let's start. Number one, focus on the absolute business return. So when you buy, let's say you buy a house to let it out and then you say, okay, I pay 100,000, the yearly rent is 6,000, my business return is after costs and everything, 6%. And then you see, okay, if I'm happy with that business return, okay, that's it. You're happy with what the business delivers and the same should be applied to stock market investing. You're buying businesses, not stocks. If a stock goes up or is, if that piece of real estate goes up, the better. But those are always free options that you have to buy. What you have to buy always is the business and then if it explodes, free beggar, four beggar, that should be inserted into the price for free. If you focus on buying businesses, as an owner, then you have a great advantage on Wall Street. If you look at Wall Street and their analysis, they are always comparing to other companies. So they are not absolute investments. They are relative investors because they compare to everything else. And then they always give an outlook two quarters ahead. What will happen? This will hit their earnings in the next, in the next two quarters. Who cares? You have to care where will their, the earnings be in the next 10 years and then put that into an absolute pers personal perspective. Number two, think like an owner. So I buy businesses, hold the business. I feel like I own the business. A few days ago, we discussed Gazprom. Okay, I feel like I'm not owning the stock. I own the pipeline, the power of Siberia that goes direct into China, where they'll start pumping gas in December. That's what I own. However, it's boring to own a pipeline. Nothing happens, perhaps a fire here and there, hopefully not. But you just own businesses, you accumulate them over the long term, like Buffett did. He accumulated the American Express, Geico, and he just holds that, lets it compound over the long term, grow, 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 and that's it. There is no excitement. And I know that I would have my current business short term would be 10 times bigger if I would uh, talk about Tesla, if I would talk about trading short term gains, neo stocks, even on the stocks I cover, if I would say, oh, Gazprom will go up another 20% in the next three months, I think I would be at 200,000 subscribers. But I'm an owner and I know that long term ownership beats stock market trading and that's a proven think. Number three, so much used, even overviews, but there is a difference between saying it and feeling it. Be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. Tesla stock, I have seen the greed over the last two years, three years, everybody was, oh yes, it will revolutionize everything, ever, ta, 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 ta. and now I see that greed turning into panic and you have seen what has happened to the stock. 
Now it's a much better investment. I'm not saying it's good or anything. I'm not covering it, but it's a much better investment now that people that it is much lower than it was six, seven months ago when it was closer to 400 from an investing perspective. However, trading, it's always excited. Something happens and unfortunately few do what has to be done, which is you buy Tesla now if you're an investor, not six months ago when it was at 400 with a huge market capitalization. Which leads to the following number and that is hyperbolic discounting. Hyperbolic discounting is a behavior finance concept where people prefer small and soon ra rather than bigger and later. As people, as normal human nature is, you want something now and you want it immediately, Everybody, your mind is then happy. It's very hard to postpone, to delay gratification, even if the gratification in the future will be much, much bigger than what you get now, which might be very, very small. So most people sold Gazprom after it went up 20, 25%. Later, the company went even higher. So you miss on a lot if you focus on the short term. If you focus on the long term, there is where the five, 10 baggers, the Peter Lynch investments develop. And this is something you have to take advantage because you see, okay, Wall Street focuses on the year, two years max. If you start focusing on the 10 years, what will the world look like in 10 years? Then, and forget about the short term volatility, rationality, then you really have an advantage over Wall Street. And that's the key. Hyperbolic discounting, also discussed in Seth Klarman's book, The Margin of Safety. And I really see so few thinking about how the world will look like in three, five, ten years. Everybody's focused on what will the next trade tariff increase do instead of focusing what will the world look like in ten years. When you focus on that, everything becomes much easier and you have a great advantage because ten years will pass like this. Consequently, anything can happen in the stock market, but it's much easier if you focus on risk. I love Tesla, for example. I love the mindset. I love the craziness. I love the changing the world mentality. But as an investor, I simply focus on risk. I know the company is on shaky financial legs, can go bankrupt if they don't hit their targets, if the capital markets say, mm, I'm not going to give, them, give you any more money, they can burn their cash very quickly Consumer cars, it's based on consumer preferences, which can change very fast. We have seen Teslas around already for six years now. So people might want to take something new, which might hit the company. So when you focus on risk, first focus, okay, what's the worst that can happen and can I take it? It's again something that makes investing much, much easier. You miss on a lot of companies that shoot up but when you compare it from a risk reward perspective, then you see, okay, I missed that, but I knew why I missed that. And that makes your investment focused on low risk, high return investment. So you try, okay, there is a margin of safety. There is a limit to what you can lose. And that makes investing again easier over the long term. And you have again an advantage because you know what is risk and reward. What does it mean risk? Risk doesn't mean the stock cannot go lower. That's absolutely impossible to predict. Any stock at any point in time can fall 70% and it will fall three times in your lifetime. Each asset class will fall 70% in value that you own. The question is, okay, what's the margin of safety? Margin of safety doesn't mean the stock will not go lower. It means that you have a long-term value that will eventually bring it back to that level or, or deliver the returns you are hoping for. It can be, I don't know, an asset, a big building that is very valuable, uh, land fields, a good ore body for a mine or something like that. So those are the margins of safety, something that will produce value for eternity. And that's something you have to focus on. The stock price will always be volatile, but the value is usually very, very stable. So that's again something you 
can take as an advantage over the rest of the market. And then something very interesting. People prefer linearity. You need, okay, my portfolio hopefully will increase 5% per year. And that's again something that will not happen like that. Everybody knew Gazprom will eventually increase the dividend, but the stock slowly was really lingering, 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 and then it exploded. Only when the news actually happened, only when things started to happen. So in the markets, nothing will ever be linear. And that's something you really have to keep in mind to avoid uh, focusing on the short-term volatility, know that things are not linear, but as long as the fundamentals develop in a relatively stable way, grow, grow and build on that, then you are okay. And then you'll find the stock price explode when the market gets recognizes what's going on. Another big advantage you can have, you can have a percentage of portfolio in cash depending on what's going on in the markets. 98% of portfolio management, professional portfolio managers have to be 98% of 95% invested at all times because it's their job to be invested in stocks. So they have to be invested. Only Buffett, Seth Klarman can have a cash allocation as large as they wish for to wait for those opportunities. And the best thing is to have a strategy. Okay, I am investing when I find an investment that gives me a risk reward return of 5%. If you are happy with 5%, 7, 10, 15%, which is my threshold. So I have said I'll be 80% invested when I can find investments of 50, that deliver 50%, 90% investment when I can find 20% business returns over the long term, 100% when I can find 25, margin investment to 120% when I can find 30 and plus risk reward adjusted investments. So for now I'm around 75% still looking, but the portfolio is on strong, strong grounds, I think. And over the long term will deliver me my 15%. If some stock falls due to trade wars, due to irrationalities, I will buy more of that. And then when it goes up, I'll again, when it hits the 15%, let's say from a 20 to a 15% return, I'll sell it and then balance my portfolio with the cash I have, which is something very few investors, professional investors can do. So to summarize with number 10, really look at what has been going on in the markets over the long term and do the opposite of what most investors and consequently Wall Street does because Wall Street caters to long term to most investors and not to long term investors. If you just look at JP Morgan's chart, investment returns over the last 20 years, you can see that asset classes did okay in relation to asset classes. We'll discuss REITs in the following videos that were the best performing asset class, but the average investor made just, what, less than 2% over the last 20 years because they buy in exuberance, they sell in panic, and they miss out on the whole market developments. So just think, okay, if my neighbor is doing this, how smart he is, is he under the influence of crowd, of herding, of everything? And what are the real basis, margin of safety, risk, business return, focus on absolute returns, absolute business returns. And when you build a portfolio on those bases, on those strongholds, you will do very, very well over time. We are going to continue to build this channel on those fundamentals, on those things that have delivered great returns for the last 100 years as value investment has shown that it beats other investment strategies. It's just a factor of mindset and you have to see whether you want to learn, want to develop that mindset. If you wish to do so, please subscribe to this channel. I'm looking forward to your comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.